uh, a past of hard drug abuse, bullied, then bully, like to play mind games, silent in custody, sleeping most of the time in custody, his father flying out to drive the 3,000 miles back with his 28-year-old son in the car that the whole country was looking for, stopped by cops twice in Indiana, the car not flagged. Now, all of that until the cop activity, Mahandi, what does that mean to you? Well, I think this is a, a bright guy. He's organized. He's purposeful, uh, highly intelligent, and uh, you know it's a lot of goal-directed behavior. Um, I'm curious about the police stopping him twice. I'm wondering if that was a pretense or actually, in, you know, they they stopped him and didn't know. You know, sometimes these things can be orchestrated as part of an investigation, and we know they were watching him. But I, I see a guy here that that knew, knows what he's doing. Um, he's probably not going to qualify for any kind of mental defense if, uh, if indeed he's the person that is responsible for these things. And it goes along with the personality that, uh, you know, he's, he's being purposeful. He's got a reason for doing what he's doing. One follow-up, Chris. Uh, it's one thing to have the argument of an innocent person wouldn't falsely confess. We all know about custodial interrogation. We know how those tactics tend to break down an honest person without uh, you know, exposure to the system uh, faster than they would someone who knows the game that the police can pay, play in interrogation. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about somebody who, if they had nothing to do with this quadruple homicide, has said nothing about it to authorities. How unusual to you, to you is that, that he's sleeping most of the time in jail and there's no account other than his silence? Oh, I think it's, I think it's somewhat unusual. It's not entirely unheard of, uh, but, you know, he's studied this stuff. Um, and if indeed he's our person, you know, he's studied it and knows his best approach is to keep his mouth shut and basically, you know, work on resting and kind of getting himself, you know, into this game, if you will, because I do believe he sees this as a game. I think he's seen it as a game as he was sitting in the classroom of that, you know, purported expert on killing, um, you know, thinking that he's pulling one over on her, um, asking questions, and there he is in the midst of the so-called so expert, and to him, I think he was, you know, getting a laugh at that, uh, if indeed he's the person. But, you know, he's being thoughtful, and he's being mindful, um, and he's being purposeful. So I think it is unheard of, but I think it's also him uh, it's not entirely unheard of, but it's, it's him being, you know, uh, focused on what his, you know, next play is going to be. Um, Councilor Garrigus, you got another side on that? Yeah, I do have another side. I always uh, shy away from the kind of off-the-court psychoanalyzing until we know more. I mean, I could, I could put together a story where... The father had pre-planned this and he wanted to spend time with his son driving back and why wouldn't they do that? Just because he's 28, does that mean you abandon your kid at that point? Uh, having a son around that age, I can relate to wanting to take a long drive with him and, and talking to him. That's number one. Number two, you know, he's, he's, there's lawyers that are both um, uh, representing him, public defenders, in Pennsylvania and in Idaho, both have said um, and have either talked to him or advised him, and they haven't said what they've said, but by implication that he believes he's going to be exonerated. We haven't even seen a probable cause affidavit yet, and the sheriff is out there screaming or yelling that it's 100% certain, it must be, there's no other person, it has to be him. That's great, but I would just caution a little bit of hesitation until we see what this probable cause affidavit looks like. Uh, the you know they did if they did discover unexplained uh, or unidentified DNA at the scene and then tracked it down through the genealogical database. I understand that as well. That's been effective um, in recent cases in California. So I still would say let's wait and see and caution a little bit of uh, um, oh, absolutely. Uh, presumption of or embrace the presumption of innocence. Absolutely, with both of my huge Python arms. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's 
fact-driven coverage.